to Arrow TV's How I Found My Destiny. This is a series where we have profound conversations with a variety of inspiring guests that share their personal and their very unique journey into the ultimate of destinations, the home of divine love, his divine eminence, Goa Shahi. And these journeys are often very emotional. And tonight we have a very special edition of how I found my destiny. And those blessed to watch on YouTube Live and Facebook will very much enjoy this incredible event. And I'm incredibly honored and privileged that I'm hosting the program that will, a world exclusive where um, we will find the ultimate journey to the destination, um, the whole account of the ultimate path to the destination of a very special person. And this person is none other than the representative of his divine eminence, Goa Shahi. <sighs> and we have been so excited and so thrilled because um, I can certainly vouch for the, um, the character of the Sufi master, that his life is about projecting the life of the divine immense Goa Shahi. And he doesn't project his own personality. So to share this journey with us, to um, give us an insight and inspiration for our own personal journey, um, we're very grateful and thankful for. So I would like to introduce the man of valor, Universal Federation peacekeeper, author, poet, and speaker, a spiritual revivalist, Sufi master, Yunus al Goha. Thank you so much. So, um, thank you very <clears throat> much for taking time out of your very busy schedule to join us this evening. It's my pleasure to be here talking to you. It's wonderful for you to be here. So, Sufi master, if we can. Um, please journey back with you to your childhood, if you can give us um, an insight into your, your beginnings. I was born in Karachi. And um, my parents had a boy who died before my birth. His name was Ismail. He was one and a half year old. So when he died, my parents were heartbroken. And my father was always sad. And um, he started visiting different saints. And he would always go there and pray that I want another son. And if God gives me a son, I would dedicate him to God. So I was born, and um, when I was five years of age, I would often look at the sky and I would call upon God. God, where are you? I want to see you. And there would be no reply, obviously. <laughs> and then I started playing cricket. I would play cricket all day. at least 10 hours, 12 hours a day. And with the passage of time, I became really religious in a sense that I would uh, uh, regularly go to the mosque five times a day. Yeah. And um, I wanted to 
see Prophet Muhammad. My mother would always talk about Prophet Muhammad. She would always say, Oh God, all I wish in my life is to see Prophet Muhammad. So please let me see him before I die. So I grew up you know, listening to my mother's prayers. Yes. So the interest of being able to see Prophet Muhammad grew in my heart as well. So I heard from somewhere that if you love somebody, you should never forget them even for a second. So, I adopted saying the name of Prophet Muhammad every time, ev- with every step I would take. Every step I would take. I used to go to a local mosque five times a day. But the yearning of seeing the Prophet was still there. The thirst didn't seem to be quenched. Yeah. And I carried on uh, being a regular uh, goer to the mosque for some time. And then I bumped into different denominations within Islam. And I was really confused. Uh, which branch of Islam is right? right. So I became really, really confused. And I decided to become secular. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, I thought there was nothing left in being a religious person anymore. Those who loved God, those who loved the Prophet, Those people had already gone. What we have today is nothing like anybody of our past time where people would be able to see God and see the Prophet. So I dedicated my life to cricket. Right. And I played wonderful cricket in Karachi on first class level. When I was 16, one of my friend was talking about Sufism to one of our common friend. And my friend was telling him that he believes in a Sufi master and he wanted him to go there along with him. But he was not willing to go. I really uh, pitied him that he had been trying to convince him for the past two hours and he didn't seem to be <laughs> convinced. So I offered him just to please him. I said, okay, I, I would come with you. And um, I went to see the Sufi master with him. And the moment I looked at His Holiness Gorsha's face for the first time in life, I felt I was lost. I couldn't take my eyes off from the beautiful face of the Lord. Well, I, would, I was just staring, literally. Mesmerized. Well, I was hypnotized, mesmerized. I was sold. <laughs> <laughs> And there was no conversation yet. <laughs> And I was looking at Sarkar's face 
and I realized in, in the middle somewhere, Sarkar looked back at me. And I still remember it was like this. Sarkar looked at me like this. So after 10 or 15 minutes, uh, there was a uh, there was an announcement uh, from the management. Those who wanted to take initiation of the heart right. should come forward. So I went there, and Sakar was sitting on a prayer mat on the floor, yeah. no chair, on the floor. Wow. And I sat in front of Sakar. And Sarkar asked me, why are you here? I couldn't speak. And Sarkar said, okay, close your eyes. I closed my eyes. And Sarkar said, say Allah who, Allah who, Allah who, Allah. And I, when my eyes were closed, I saw there are two Sarkars. One Sarkar is sitting on the floor on the prayer mat and initiating my heart. Another Sarkar is standing by Sarkar. And I was really shocked. My eyes were closed. But when I opened my eyes, I saw the same thing. And Sarkar is talking to me and I'm looking on the right side of Sarkar, where another Sarkar was standing. And Sarkar smiled. And I went back home. When I was going back home, I heard Allah, who, Allah, who. I, and, I, and I enjoyed it, but I didn't realize where it was coming from. And suddenly when the sound of Allahu, the volume of the sound, abruptly increased, and my entire body was beating with Allahu, 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 Allah. I was so amazed. My gosh, my friend told me only the heart would say it. But what is this? My entire body is saying Allah. Ah, amazing. Entire body. And then I was walking towards my house and I saw the Prophet's mosque, Masjid al Nabawi, which is in Medina. The entire mosque was floating in the air in front of my eyes. And first came a gold plate. And Muhammad was inscribed on it in beautiful words. Muhammad, gold. And it started to glitter and shine like the sun. And a beam of light started to come out of that gold plate. And it started going into my heart. And then came another plate. Wow. It said Ali. And the beam of light started going into my heart. And I was literally flying in the, in the air. I was walking on air. And this, is, this was the first day. This is the first day. First day, only one hour after Sarkar's meeting. So I went home. I sat on the chair. The chair started saying Allahu. Oh I was walking on the floor and the floor was saying Allahu. It was a strange. <laughs> Amazing. 
So that was how I met Sakar Ghoshai. It was... It cannot be expressed either in words or emotions. That was something that the mind cannot gather. We cannot do justice with how we were blessed by Sarkar Gohorshari. And I was only 16. We're 16 at this time. And then, you know, after a year or so, I was... Uh, there used to be different gatherings, Sufi gatherings, organized by followers of Sarkar Gohorshari throughout the city. And Karachi is a cosmopolitan city, a big city, big city. And um, I would go everywhere on foot. I would walk all night, all night. And in the morning, I would return home. And when I would return home, my father would beat me up. He beat me up a lot. And one time he pushed me from the wall and uh, I got fractured in my elbow. And then one time um, he put all on the floor in, my sh in the shop um, red chili, crushed red chili and he tied me up with rope and asked me to sit down. First he put a gallon of kerosene oil on me, kerosene oil and then red chili, salt in my eyes, in my ears, in my nose and he then held my head and started bang, banging my head against the wall. I had 11 stitches in my head. It was terrible time. And then one day, uh, he, my father's elder sister came to our house. I put Sarkar's picture uh, in my room. So she said, whose picture is this? And I, said, and I said, this is my master's picture. And she said to my father, if you do not remove this picture, I will not step in your house. So my father was about to remove it and I quickly went there and I grabbed the picture. And my father said, either you leave this house or you remove the picture. So I said, okay, I will leave the house. And uh, when I left my house, I only had Sarkar's picture as my entire belonging. I still remember it was night time. I was holding Sarkar's picture against my chest and I was walking outside, kicked out home, and I was walking. And then I put Sarkar's picture in the mosque because I became homeless. I couldn't, I didn't have any place. So, I spent about three, four years uh, in the streets. I would sleep on the road. Oh, and uh, oftentimes I wouldn't eat any food for sometimes 17 days, sometimes 21 days. 
and when I would be really hungry, I would search the bins here and there. You know, people who throw away leftover food. Sometime I would find some piece of chicken or burger from the dustbin and I would eat it. But that time was like you go for surgery and they give you uh, local anesthesia. So I literally came to the street, but that was the time when Sarkar Gaur Shahi started to train me spiritually. Yes. So my body was insignificant to me because most of the time Sarkar would come and Sarkar would take out my soul from the body. So I wouldn't feel where my body is and how in and how badly it is being treated. So in those three years, Sarkar uh, educated me, trained me, and I went through this uh, process which included many things. Uh, a negation of the self, denial of the self. I had lost self-esteem. I would think I had no value in life. I, I, I had only one outfit and I stayed in that outfit for three or four years. Uh, when I would go to uh, Sufi Zikr, uh, some people would uh, really um, bully me. And they would tell me that your clothes are impure, unclean. Shame on you. You don't even take a shower. You don't change clothes. And I would just cry. I didn't want to tell them that I don't have a house. I didn't want to tell anybody that my parents kicked me out of the house. But those three years were full of Sakar's presence. It was wonderful time. I saw many miracles. in those three years. Yes. There were riots in the city uh, in those years. People would carry guns and they would shoot in the street. And, uh, you know, I would be sleeping on the footpath on the sidewalk. And when I would wake up in the morning, I would find 10, 12 dead bodies over me. Mm-hmm. I would see bullets flying in the air. Bullets. Going, piercing through bodies, heads of people sitting next to me. Only Sarkar knows how I survived. I have seen death. as close to me as this hand is. And in those years, I, I, I saw that I have been divided into many different uh, bodies. Yes. I'm sleeping and I'm also sitting. <laughs> I would make experiments. I'm sleeping and um, uh, I would think, okay, let's go to uh, Mecca. So I would go spiritually. I would just close my eyes and I would go to Mecca wow. and do tawaf 
circumambulation around the black cubicle. Right. Wow. Well, and you know that um, um, mosque in uh, Jerusalem? Yes. Yeah. And the Church of Nativity? Mm -hmm. I went there many times. Wow. Many times in those years. Yes. And the first time I saw Jesus was in that mosque in Jerusalem, where we couldn't go. The Al-Aqsa Mosque, yes, it is. So, um, I started uh, seeing different spiritual dignitaries. There is nobody that I haven't seen. <laughs> nobody. I, I met Mother Mary. And uh, I met Luke, Matthews, and uh, Thompson, all of them. I met Moses. It was such a wonderful time. Wonderful time. So I was then, Sarkar Gohar Shahi then, uh, then asked Prophet Muhammad to teach me Quran. So Prophet Muhammad would bring a big, big, mighty, big Qur'an and he would teach me Qur'an. Mm -hmm. He would speak and the words would go into my heart. The words would go into my heart and different lights would come out of my heart. So those three years were really wonderful and then Uh, Sarkar got me married and I came here um, to UK about 30 years ago. 30 years. And um, one day I was just sitting at home and I said something and I realized Oh, I spoke the way Sarkar does. This is not my voice. This is Sarkar's voice. How come? I got really scared. And I called Sarkar on the phone. Sarkar picked up the phone and started laughing. <laughs> And I was scared. Mm -hmm. I said, Sarkar, how are you? I want to tell you something. And Sarkar is laughing. <laughs> Sarkar, something happened. I want to share it with you. Yes. And Sarkar is smiling and laughing. Sarkar, there is something really important that I want to share with you. <laughs> and Sarkar said, I know. I know. <laughs> If it was my voice, do you think I do not know? <laughs> if, it, if it was my voice, do you think I, I do not know? Sakar, I want to know why this happened. And Sakar said, this happened because I live in your heart. Oh. I cried a lot. And then oftentimes, you know, Sarkar wouldn't call me. Sarkar would send spiritual messages. I would, my heartbeats would rise and uh, I would see Sarkar's name is uh, flashing on my heart. And then I would hear Sarkar's voice. Okay, do this, go there. So initially, in the early days, when this started happening, I, I would call Sarkar on the phone and I would explain to Sarkar what's going on. And Sarkar said, yeah, that's true, but don't call me. There is no need for you to confirm. I know this is happening. Yeah. So then, you know, after many times, 
I heard Sarkar's voice. I had secretive conversation, a spiritual conversation with Sarkar, and I confirmed it with Sarkar. And then I let go of it. I said, okay, this is fine now. I, I'm, I would be sitting alone and, you know, I would see Sarkar is sitting also. Sarkar would talk to me. I would, sometimes I would speak, but it would, wouldn't be my voice. It would be Sarkar's voice. And I would hear it the way people heard it. یعنی مجھے بھی ایسے آواز آتی سرکار کی جیسے لوگوں کو آتی سیم وے بٹ ون ڈے سرکار کھیم ٹو انگلینڈ سرکار واز سٹنگ ان روم نیکسٹ ٹو مائی روم اٹس لائک بہائنڈ دس وال از سرکارز روم اینڈ وی آر سٹنگ ہیئر اینڈ سرکارز وائس اسٹارٹیڈ کمنگ آف مائی تھروٹ Now, Faisal and Murtaza, they were really shocked. Because they used to think that Sarkar comes spiritually and speaks through him. And this is how Sarkar's voice comes out of his throat. This was their concept. Mm-hmm. That Sarkar comes spiritually, yes. enter in his body and then speak through him. But now Sarkar is sitting there. How come Sarkar's voice is coming from his throat? Now, they were just thinking, what is this mystery? And suddenly, Sarkar called my name from the next room. Yunus, bring me water. Yunus, Pani Lao. Sometime, Sarkar would call me Yunus Khan. <laughs> And some, sometime, Sarkar would simply say, Yunus, like this. So, like a robot, I stood up, I went to the kitchen, brought water. And now, Sarkar is sitting here on the sofa. And I'm giving Sarkar a glass of water. And Sarkar didn't even touch water and Sarkar looked into my eyes. And Sarkar said, right now, the one who is bringing water and the one who will drink water are the same. Oh, gosh. Amazing. Sarkar has said that this moment, the one who is bringing water and the one who is drinking Sarkar said, the one who brought water and the one who asked for water. In this moment in time, I am here and I am there. You are nowhere. I am here and I am there. The one who is taking the glass is me. And the one who is giving the glass to me is me. Wow. That was amazing. <laughs> And then, you know, started a new chapter in spirituality. For example, if somebody is shaking hands with Sarkar, I would feel the same. Even if Sarkar is in Pakistan, I am in England. Yes. But if somebody is shaking hands with Sarkar, I would feel that. that somebody is shaking hands with me. But nobody is shaking hands with me. Somebody is shaking hands with Sarkar in Pakistan. Right? If somebody is touching Sarkar, I would feel it. Now, this is a different story in spirituality. If Sarkar is eating, I don't feel hungry. I haven't eaten anything all day. And suddenly, I, I, I would feel uh, chicken taste. Chicken, tea, milk. And I'm not taking anything. 
And then I realized because Sarkar was eating chicken, so I had the taste of chicken in my mouth. Well, <laughs> who knew? This was amazing. amazing. And um, then one day, maybe before, maybe two weeks prior to the day of occultation, Sarkar appeared in my dream. And Sarkar said to me, okay, take me to my palace. And I said, Sarkar, where is your palace? Sarkar said, I will tell you the way. But we didn't have any car, so there was a motorbike. Sarkar said, use that motorbike. Do you know how to? I said, yes, Sarkar, I know how to. So Sarkar sat in the back. I was riding on the bike with Sarkar and we came into a jungle in the middle of the jungle. There was a big palace. And Sarkar said, okay, leave me here now and go back to the world. And do not come here again until I call you. When I'm ready to come back, I will call you. And when I call you, only then come to me. And don't tell no one where I am. So as I was leaving, Sarkar called my name again. Yunus, come back. And I turned back. And I saw that Sarkar was standing like this, open arm. And Sarkar said, you forgot to hug me. Oh. You're going away from me. Let's hug. So I hugged Sarkar. And Sarkar said, open your mouth. I opened my mouth and Sarkar put his tongue in my mouth. Many times. And uh, then Sarkar said to me, okay, you should go now. I will call you, right? I will call you. And when I call you, you come back. And a big tear came out of Sarkar's eyes. When I woke up, I immediately went to see Sarkar. But I, I couldn't see Sarkar. So Nasir and his mother, they went inside. And uh, Sarkar, they explained, they, they explained to Sarkar what I saw in my dream. And Sarkar said to them that I am appointing him. Uh, on a spiritual mission, on a duty. So I purified his tongue. And Sarkar said to Nasir that, tell your dad I love him. I, I never wished anything in my life <laughs> for except that I am always with Sarkar. I didn't want to see God. 
I didn't want to be a saint of God. I didn't want any wealth of this world. I didn't want any luxury in life. I only wished that I am always with Sarkar. And um, Sarkar says to me, I am always with you. But I don't even find myself. Sarkar says, I am always with you. But I, I, I don't even find myself. I don't feel myself. Sometimes I feel I, I have to learn how to behave like a human being. And, and at, at times I, I, I say to myself, no, 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 I can't do it. I cannot behave like a human being. I try my best to behave like a human being. Sometimes, you know, I, I show extra anger. Not because I'm angry. I'm trying to behave like a human being. So, in trying to behave like a human being, I cannot really um, measure the intensity of anger which is suitable for human beings. Do you understand my point? I stopped to exist a long time ago. I feel like I'm just a robot. And I don't feel hatred for anybody. I want everybody to become pure. I feel pain of everybody. But I don't feel my own pain. Really, honestly, yes. So that was the... So then the, the mission of love started for you and you realized that a platform needed to be Yeah. Made to yeah. propagate this divine message to the whole world, which you've been working tirelessly on. Then we met you. We met Brother Steve. And um, I knew f from the very first day. And that Brother Steve was a special soul. One of the souls of Lord Jesus Christ. The elite soul, which was picked up by Lord Jesus Christ. So I concentrated on, on your heart. Every day I would close my eyes and concentrate on your heart. And maybe you do not know, but you are perfect in sainthood now. This is Sarkar's Karam. It's the blessings of the Lord. And now we have to take this mission to every single corner of the world. to every single soul. When you become a Sufi, you cannot be 
confined to one religion. Sufi belongs to God. So when you become a true Sufi, the entire creation of God is your community. Whether you're Christian, Jew, or a Muslim, or a Sikh, doesn't make any difference. Because ultimately, it's the same God. There may be different names given to Him. But He's the same God. And He wants to love everybody. Religions have a problem. Even at the time when these religions were established, religions are very limited. Their approach is limited, their knowledge is limited, their, you know, the entire parameters. It's all nothing but limitations. In spirituality, Sufism, there is no limit. And it is relatively less complicated than religions. Religions are practices that your bodies follow. Spirituality is everything to do about your souls, enlightenment of the souls, the truth. It is about reflection of the truth in the mirror of your spirit. That's what it is. And we found now with the expansion of this mission over the years, Mehdi Foundation, and as I joined Messiah Foundation International, more and more people were joining. And now with the Universal Sufi Order, and that wonderful year we had last year, America, Mexico, Israel. And um, this is all your hard work and the, the fact that people from all different walks of life, myself included, what, no matter what background, people feel they're at home and they feel very comfortable in your presence. But the Steve is all about the teamwork. The credit goes to every member of the team. Everybody puts in efforts. You have put in a lot of effort. Then we have Amjad Bhai, he put in a lot of effort. Irfan, Nadeem Bhai, Nasir, all these individuals. The teamwork, it's, it's not a one-man show. It's a teamwork. And we are thankful to Sarkar Gaur Shahi that we have a wonderful team. We, we, have, we have you as part of the team. You have taken a lot of responsibility and eased the burden on my shoulder. I'm very happy with this. You have really eased a lot of burden of me. Your contribution towards this mission is remarkable. And Sarkar, bless you more and more and more. Thank you. Yes. Um, it was a wonderful journey that we're going on with Sufi master, you know, Sabgaha. Um, as I've mentioned earlier, you're such, um, such a person that doesn't want to project your own personality. Mm. So we really appreciate that you've come on and um, shared this, your very innermost feelings and very emotional feelings with us. And um, we have not even experienced a hundredth thousandth of these kind of hardships and um, it's very important that we share this divine mission of love throughout all four corners of the world and um, this has been made very easy by our Sufi master his divine eminence we thank his divine eminence Goshei, for blessing Sufi master amongst us that he's amongst us um, that we can share this bounty and beautiful knowledge. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? That's all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, thank you.
Thank you for joining us on How I Found My Destiny. <laughs>